From 1971 to 1972, a phantom killer was on the loose in and around Washington, D.C. and Prince George's County, killing young African-American girls. This phantom killer, unfortunately, claimed the lives of six young African-American girls, and their names will forever be connected with one another because of their fateful encounters with an unknown serial killer. They were between the ages of 10 and 18 years old at the time of their deaths, and this killing spree started in April of 1971 with Carol Spinks, age 13. Carol Spinks vanished while walking home after buying groceries from a 7-Eleven convenience store. Carol's body was found in the grass almost one week later next to Highway I-295. His next victim, Darlene Johnson, 16 years old, worked at a recreation center as a summer job. One day in July, Darlene didn't show up for work and was found 11 days later near the same location as Carol Spinks near the I-295. About a week later, at just 10 years old, Brenda Crockett went missing after leaving a movie theater, or another report says she was on her way to the store. When she was abducted and the freeway phantom made Brenda call her family twice during the time of her abduction before she was killed. In October, Nina Moshe Yates was abducted on her way home from the store. She was found dead a few hours after her abduction. In November, Brenda Woodard, 18, was returning home after dinner out with a friend. She was found six hours later, and the highway phantom left a note in her coat pocket. And in September of 1972, the sixth victim, Diane Williams, 17, was abducted and killed, presumably after taking a bus ride. Years later, her sister, Patricia Williams, became a D.C. police lieutenant. All six of these girls were raped and strangled, and five out of the six were missing shoes when they were found. However, the freeway phantom had an exception to his typical M.O. with his fifth victim, Brenda Woodard, which also gave them some clues about this killer. As I mentioned earlier, the freeway phantom left a note in Brenda Woodard's pocket, which said, quote, This is tantamount to my insensitivity to people, especially women. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom, end quote. The note was written in Brenda's handwriting, and apparently it didn't appear to be written under duress, which led investigators to believe that Brenda may have known the killer and may possibly have been unaware of the danger she was in. However, she was murdered more brutally than the other girls. She had defensive wounds, her shoes were left on her feet, and she was also stabbed, unlike the other victims. Brenda Crockett, who called home during her abduction, also gave investigators clues about the freeway phantom. According to grunge.com, quote, Brenda had called her home twice on the night she was abducted. The first call was to tell her sister that she had been kidnapped by a white man and had been driven to Virginia, a story police believe was fabricated to throw them off the scent. Brenda then called a second time. She said, did my mother see me? She asked her mother's boyfriend, who picked up. How could your mother see you if you're in Virginia? He frantically answered before demanding that she put her abductor on the phone. But that was not possible. Well, I'll see you, Brenda said in a whisper before the line went dead. Jenkins believes that the second call was proof that the killer was nearby and thought he had been spotted by Brenda's mother, who had been out searching the neighborhood for her daughter. Why would you let her call home, not once, but twice, Jenkins said. He had to make sure that the mother didn't see her, end quote. While investigating this case, police discovered that the freeway phantom collected tokens from his victims as well. He kept shoelaces, curlers, and textbooks from these victims, and it was also believed that he was connected to St. Elizabeth's Hospital, which was a mental asylum in Washington, D.C., which was the central point surrounding where the murders occurred when mapping out the locations. It was speculated that he may have been an employee of the hospital and was very familiar with the area. Other clues about the freeway phantom are that these murders stopped in 1972, which may suggest he moved out of the area, was incarcerated, or possibly died. 
Did the police have any potential suspects or leads on the identity of the freeway phantom? Yes, a gang called the Green Vega Rapists was on the investigators' radar, and in the 70s, a gang member told investigators privately that another member of his gang was responsible for the murders. However, when this gang member's accusation became public, he ceased cooperating with the police on this matter, possibly for fear of his life. However, despite this gang member's allegations, eventually the police did not suspect that the gang had any ties or involvement in the murders, but another person of interest did emerge. His name was Robert Askins. He was a convicted rapist and kidnapper who had also been previously charged with homicide three times, and he was a former patient of St. Elizabeth's Hospital. As the investigation intensified into Robert Askins as a potential freeway phantom, his home was raided and papers he had saved from the appellate court contained the word tantamount in the paperwork. Aside from the word usage in the court papers, it was also alleged that the word tantamount was commonly used by him as well, which was one of the words used in the letter found on Brenda Woodard. Did any clues or investigations result in an arrest of a suspect or a conviction? Unfortunately, the answer is no, hence the term freeway phantom, because this killer was never found. Although Askins appeared to be a promising candidate at the time, he denied being the freeway phantom, and there was no physical evidence to link him to any of the crimes. Robert Askins died in prison in 2010. There are several other factors that made it difficult to find the freeway phantom as well. The killer washed his victims' bodies to destroy evidence, and he discarded their bodies in different states, which further complicated the investigation. His DNA was never recovered, and he may have been able to fly under the radar in the community because organized killers are often memorable, upstanding citizens that may use their charm to cover up the evil that lies beneath. These murders were also not necessarily a top priority because unfortunately African Americans are not always given the same attention and fervor that other communities receive when trying to solve a crime and close a case. According to grunge.com, quote, those black girls didn't mean anything to anybody. I'm talking about on the police department, claimed Tommy Musgrove, who joined the D.C. police in 1972 and later headed the homicide unit. If those girls had been white, they would have put more manpower on it. There's no doubt about that, he added, end quote. In 2019, Jennifer Donnellan, a spokeswoman for the Prince George's County Police Department, said they were still actively investigating this case. But Elena Gertz, spokeswoman for the Metropolitan Police Department in D.C., said the cases were purged years ago and there is no longer any active investigations on these cases. I'm not sure which spokeswoman is correct, but I do hope that neither police department would ever give up on cold cases. There have been many articles and books written on the freeway phantom because many people have not given up. They hold out hope that maybe a family member of the killer may even find a token the killer took from one of the girls and turn it into the police department. At this point, it doesn't matter whether the killer is dead or alive. Sometimes it's just important to know. According to WUSA9.com, quote, But after nearly five decades, Evander Spinks still hopes to tell her sister one more thing, quote, that we know who it is, Evander said. <laughs> Bloopers. In 2019, Jennifer Donnellan, a spokeswoman for the Prince George's County Police Department, said they were still actively investigating this case. But Elena Getz, spokeswoman, okay. About a week later, at just 10 years old, Brenda Crockett went missing after legal... <coughs> Ooh, excuse me.